Hanging something on the walls of our locker room is, is very meaningful to us. We really have tried to, to approach it in a way where things have to have real meaning and, and to the values of our program. So interestingly, we don't have anything in here recognizing any of our All-Americans. We don't have anything in here recognizing any of the accomplishments of our team going to a championship game or doing anything else. What we have are things that recognize the values that we hold sacred. So, got another thing for the for the team room. Sweet. Well, it's a great patch. We're going to hang the patch in there just because it's another reminder of, of the things that, that we think are important, you know, for us to, to appreciate and value the sacrifices that other people make that allow us the privileges that we have. It's part of the values of Notre Dame, so, you know, it's something we're going to make sure is part of our program. All right. Very good, very good. We'll make Thank you. Up five to four with 11.5 left to go in regulation. Tory Barnes scores. The Pride have tied it up with 3.9 left to go. What a turn of events! So they score with 3.9 seconds to go, and we're all kind of in shock. And we are heading to overtime. At that point, we just wanted to come out of the end of game break uh, going into overtime with the sense that it's all good. It's just we're one play away, and we're the ones that have to make that next play. Sean Rogers, score! Yeah! Notre Dame escapes with a 6 5 win. After the game, I was walking back, and then I see probably 50 little kids with ball in hand and marker, or just dying for autographs and just high fives. And walking off the field was definitely one of the, the highlights of my lacrosse career and really put things into perspective when I got to see my family to my right and young admirers to my left. The fact that they were so excited to, to meet the, the kid who grew up a few miles away who scored the game winning goal, um, that was really exciting. And, Something I obviously could relate to, being that I was that little kid. And the next day was a day of perspective as well. All right, hey, listen up. Let's get something out of this today. Not this coming week, but the following week. Think about it. It's a, it's a three-game stretch in seven days. All right, that's a lot. The healthier we have you going into that, the healthier you're going to come out of it. Right now, we're three and one, having played four top 20 teams. So you, you come out of the next three and you're six and one, and you're in a great position. You lose three, and your season narrows down to, we have to win our league. Let's go up or down. Breathe in, back to the right. This is a, a pivotal week for us, you know, and a pivotal eight days. Relax. I mean, in eight days, you could go 0-3 or 3-0, oh, so these eight days hold a lot of influence on where we end up in, in May. That big week coming up, so every day between now and and Sunday, you know, two weeks from now, when we finish this three-game stretch, is important, right? Let's do the little things that matter. The way we look at this is we think this can be one of the great experiences in a kid's life. I, I, I really believe that it can be and should be because they're so emotionally invested in it, because they're doing it with 50 of their best friends in, in the world who will be 50 of their friends for the rest of their lives. The power of that is so great that if we take advantage of it properly and, and take advantage of the opportunities that, that playing a a national schedule gives us the you know the things that Notre Dame allows us to do. There's great power in that. One of the things that Coach Corrigan is constantly reminding our players is, you know, that you're part of a culture, that you're always part of a community, and that you got these multiple chances to define your own character, but also learn from the character of others. So the day after we defeated Hofstra, when we went into Manhattan, there was all those pieces coming together. My uncle's over here somewhere. Basically my mom's best friend growing up since they were little. She's been a part of my life, my whole life. And I can say I call her an aunt still to this day. Her husband died. He was a firefighter. I was the last one of my family to see him. He walked me down uh, out of my house that morning. On the Tuesday morning, I still remember, like it was yesterday, uh, on my way to the bus stop. And uh, so yeah, I haven't been here 
yet, so it's kind of it's nice to see this. His name is Mike Russo. Just being able to see him and see his name engraved there, and, and so it, it was neat to see all those names and see them finally honored in, in a way that's I think befitting. So after Ground Zero, we got to go see Ellis Island. Welcome aboard. Our current course recalls the voyages of approximately 12 million American immigrants. They pass through these waters on their way to Ellis Island and a new life. My name is uh, Bob Rogers. I'm the father of Sean Rogers. Sean's grandfather came over here from Ireland. When he came here to Ellis Island, unbeknownst to him, the quota for Irish people to come into the United States at that time was already fulfilled. So thinking on his feet, I know there's enough quota left for the English, so I'm going to change it to an English name, Rogers. So he had to change his name from McGlade to Rogers. Yeah, it would have been Sean McGlade, which uh, Sean Rogers is pretty, Sean Patrick Rogers is pretty Irish already, but Sean Patrick McGlade would have been <laughs> even more Irish. From Ellis Island on to New York City. So after Ellis Island, we got to go see the firehouse. I love going to the firehouse. <laughs> Hi, bro. Tom, how are you? Great to see you. Captain Tom Byrne, uh, engine 315, ladder 135 in Jamaica, Queens. He's my older brother. Guys, this is my older brother, Tom. He was the captain here. He just, just retired, but he did such a good job that you can tell them to cook for us again. Oh, I think it's great. I mean, uh, we don't get to see him that much. I mean, he's, I, I still live in New York. Uh, he lives, you know, in Indiana. And it's great to see him uh, when I get a chance. You know, it's like we were growing up again together. And I'm the older brother, and he's got to listen to me. <laughs> Back is going in. Look out. Get your son, Phil. Give him the spin. Good night. Good night. Your, uh, book on the front. That's some efficiency right there. Very few things more personal than breaking bread with someone. There's something about a great meal when you're sitting across from your friend, and it's great conversation, and the selflessness they cook for us while protecting that neighborhood from fires and that they found the time to do that. Just dig in. The guys from the house uh, did a great job and then we got it done. And you guys ate all the food. It was good. The food was phenomenal. I don't think there's any better chefs than firehouse chefs. That adding in, being able to be shoulder to shoulder with these guys who I idolize and not the sense that I want to be a firefighter, but in the sense that I have a great deal of respect for them and what they do. We got to see that up close and personal when we were eating and they had to go on a call for a uh, possible DOA. Whatever they're doing, they stop, drop what they're doing, get their gear on, and go. Possible DOA. Fourth floor. It's not something in the abstract when you're there and you watch these guys and you see their, their dedication and you see their commitment to what they're doing. I think it's pretty powerful. You know, New York City farm and any farm, and are, they're very understated about what they do. It's just, it's just what they do. They don't have to talk about it. They don't have to promote themselves around it, which is a great ethic for our guys to see that you know you draw attention to yourself not by, by what you say, but by what you do. On behalf of the guys from Engine 315 and Ladder 125 and the officers, it's a little something for you guys to take back. All right. Thank you. Good luck to you this season. All right. Yeah. We're hanging We're in a while. All right. There you go. Right. Thanks. Good. You Appreciate got it. it. Awesome. There's not a separation for us from our development as a team and the development of our kids. I mean, it, it really is all in, in one and the same idea. Thanks for, for having us here. Thank you. Thank you. They gave me a, a patch from the, from the greatest show on earth. We'll hang this in our locker room since they've got our banner hanging uh, upstairs. We'll, we'll hang their banner in, in, in our locker room in South Bend. All right, so thanks again, guys, and, and uh, we'll see you out. Walking out of the firehouse, those three trips really put things into perspective. That was really a neat experience, and I was just glad that I was able to be here when we did it. Jerry!